Well, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I feel pretty bad about what I'm getting ready to share with you, and I'm probably going to be painting myself out as the bad guy. I probably deserve to wear that color for this video. I don't know if bad guy has a color. Uh, but folks, a lot of people have been asking for an update on my prison pen pals. And it was months ago, probably six months ago, when I first introduced you to Google and also Doug. Doug serving 1,800 years, Google serving like 200 and something years himself. And to be completely honest with you, as we begin this, the first update to give to you guys is I haven't spoken to these dudes in a few months. And that is completely my fault. To say that I forgot about them, I don't want to say that, but I did. And you know, to think that I've been locked up and I've been in this situation before where people out here in the free world forget about you. Well, here I am forgetting about people who are locked up. And that's not right. I definitely need to drop both of these guys a line. And after I share with you this video and these emails that I've received, I'm not exactly sure how that's going to go or what I could even say. So maybe we'll practice here in this video. The short of it is, I haven't talked to these guys in a while. And I didn't even know I had received as many emails as I have, but I've got one, two, three, four. I've got five emails. And they're all from Doug, who again is serving something like 1,800 years. The last time that I heard from Google was months ago as well. And really, he just sent me like a two-line email, said, hey, I heard you were dealing with some people saying some crazy things about you, and that was messing up your business. And, you know, it took me a minute to realize what he was talking about because it was from October when he sent that email. And I was like, damn, what kind of drama was I dealing with back in October? Uh, but I was having to think what Google was talking about. And then I remembered, oh yeah, I'm pretty sure it was back during that time I was talking about the Yelp reviews and Get Gone Moving and Hauling. I really need to drop Google a line. In this video, all of the updates that I'm going to be giving to you guys are from Doug. And what this is probably going to showcase amongst a few different things. One, probably being the fact that I'm a piece of shit to some degree for forgetting about this dude. But, you know, I hope it doesn't showcase that too much. I'm being honest. Life gets in the way. When you're out here and somebody's in there, you know, it's easy to get preoccupied. And it's easy to put things off. Oh, I'll get with it. And then you just flat out forget. That's pretty much what happened with me. But what else this is going to showcase is how people who are doing life handle that. Let's look at Google. I actually knew Google when I was locked up. I didn't know Doug. The reason I even became familiar with Doug was because of a newspaper article that I read about this guy serving this crazy prison sentence. A thousand plus years, almost 2,000 years. But in Doug's case, who's serving 200 and something years, he hasn't heard from me in months. Well, doesn't really seem like uh, he's phased by that. Maybe he's used to that. All of that sounds horrible. But in Doug's case, you guys are going to hear that Doug just ain't handling this the same way that Google is. So I want to start back from the last emails that Doug sent to me, which is all the way back on 9-9-2019. Uh, that's September, September, October. That's September, uh, September the 9th would be the first of the emails that I didn't respond to of Doug's. And again, there's five of these. We're going to run through these pretty quickly. But on 9-9, Doug would hit me up saying, Hey dude, what's going on with you? I haven't heard shit from you, so I wanted to see what's been going on. Things are slow in here, just hanging out. But we're back on lockdown because the Bloods jumped this old dude and put him in the hospital. So there's no telling how long we'll be on lock. Doesn't really sound like things are too slow. And again, I got to keep in mind where Doug is at. He's at a maximum security, a level four or five. You know, and this type of stuff is pretty common. Dudes getting jumped by gangs, put in the hospital, if, if not even worse. I know you're busy and all. I hope your queen is doing good. What all have you been doing with your new business stuff? Anyways, I wanted to ask you if you could shoot me a few dollars to help me out if you could. If not, it's cool. I need to get some stuff together like new shoes and some art supplies. My things are really effed up. If you could help me out, I would appreciate it a lot. Uh, no worries if you can't, okay? Hope life is not too stressful on you. I ain't gonna lie. Life is super stressful. And it only seems to be getting more stressful and the stress of life and everything that I'm doing, trying to do, we've been doing, you know, does in some way 
tie in to the fact that, you know, I've essentially forgotten about my prison pen pals. No excuse, but it kind of is. I am working on a portrait for this guy who wrote me from your website. He is deploying soon. Uh, that's where all my energy has been focused on lately. I want it to be really good for him. Well, man, I don't know if you did just not want to kick it with me anymore or whatnot, so I'll keep this short. If you can't help me, it is fine. Please tell your queen I said hello. She got any friends, LOL. <laughs> oh, man. She got any friends. Classic line in prison when a guy's got a girl and he's got a homeboy who ain't got no girl. Hey, your girl got any friends? I know I said it a time or two. Never really worked out for me. And uh, my wife, she does have a few friends. I think they're all married, though. Anyway, Stick, much respect, Doug. In relation to this first email, he says that he's working on a portrait for somebody. He was asking me for some money. I didn't see this email, and it's crazy to think that it's been sub since September that I've checked the JPay email thing. Damn. How long has that been? September, October, November, December. Damn. On September the 30th of 2019, it would be a couple of weeks later, uh, Doug would hit me up again saying, Hey man, hope life is treating you and your old lady well. I wanted to ask you to please take my name off from people writing me I got so much stuff going on in my life and I want to focus on my daughter and my fiance. I don't want to be a shitty friend to people trying to give me a chance. I will check in on you from time to time if you don't mind, but I need to focus on me and my family. Things are really messed up inside me right now and I don't want people to think that I'm a shitty person. I value everyone way more than they know. At the end of the day, myself and my family have to be number one. I hope you and your viewers are not offended by this. I will let you go for now. I hope you're good and stuff. I know you have your hands full anyways. Much respect, Doug. Please take my name off your list. I am sorry, Stick. Man, again, this is from September. I'm just now seeing, I'm literally just now reading this email for the very first time as I'm filming this video. Cody printed these out for me. I didn't even know there were five. All I knew was about this last pretty long and intensive email that we're going to be getting to. You know, one thing that I think about as I read that last email is, you know, the last that I remembered, him and his fiance broke up. I mean, you know, when you're dealing with a relationship while you're locked up, it's going to be a rocky situation. The first thing that I want to say is much respect to Doug's fiance. I think I've spoken with her via messenger like a time or two in the past. So much respect to her. She's a trooper for sticking by her man's side who has this unbelievable amount of time. And if, you know, if Doug doesn't, I don't know. I don't know. Let's see what this next uh, email says. This is from October the 4th of 2019. So this is like five or six days after that email. Hey, bro, have not heard from you in a minute, so I wanted to see what's up with you and your queen. Stuff here is okay, I guess. I hope I have not offended you at all, man. I never was trying to. I know you stay busy and all, man. But if you could, I could really use some help. If you could shoot me some money. I'm struggling big time right now. If you can't, I understand. Please let me know if you can. I really would like to do something for my daughter for Christmas, and I am really struggling in here myself. I know it's not your problem at all, but if you could help me, at all, I would really be thankful, man. You know, I feel bad reading this. You know, this guy's asking me for some money. It's October. He's asking me for money for his daughter for Christmas. That's two months away. And you know, I, I've kicked this dude a good amount of money. We've sold artwork for him. He's gotten all of the proceeds from that artwork that we've sold. Uh, we, I think the first time we sold artwork for him, we sold all of his artwork. And then the second time that we put up new artwork that he sent to us, I don't think we sold very much of that at all. But I know anytime that we sold work, we sent him money. You know, I would send him money just from time to time. And anytime that I did a video, I definitely was sending him money. So you can mark my words doing this video right here. I'm going to kick him a few dollars because I just feel like that's the right thing to do even though it might be too little too late. He was asking for this money back in October and also September, and it's now February. That's crazy. But also, even mentioning that and even knowing that I will kick this dude the money, I got no problem doing that. I play fair. I always try to play fair. You know, you got to think to yourself, whenever you're dealing with somebody who's a pen pal and take it from me because I used to be 
I hate the way this, I, I was the master at this. When it came to asking for money, so you always gotta keep that in mind, especially when you've been through the situation before. And I get people who reach out to me a lot and say, Joe, you know, do you think it's legitimate this person telling me that they need money because they're about to have back surgery in prison and it's gonna cost $10,000? Should I send them that money? I'm not kidding when I tell you, like where there's a will, there's a way. And dudes, while locked up, they got some game. So let's just be real about this. I hope your new business thing is taken off. You seem really busy, and also, that must be a good thing. How is life for you? I hope it's going really well. How is your old lady doing, man? I pray you all get blessed soon with a beautiful child. I had explained to Doug, you know, that we were going through the IVF. I know you want that and all. I am chilling, just taking it one day at a time, trying to work on my family and all. Stuff is so effed up right now. I need to get my stuff together. Uh, that's the second time that he's mentioned this in two different emails. So I can't even begin to imagine, you know, what this dude deals with mentally. Not only given the situation that he's in, but, you know, for you guys who don't know what Doug did, Doug did some pretty heinous stuff. Uh, maybe I can link a story for why this man is serving these 1,800 years if you guys don't know. And, you know, there's also been people who have gotten mad at me for featuring Doug because... You know, he's locked up for murder. And people say, oh, Joe, you're giving airtime to a murderer. This is my pen pal. And that's what this is. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. You know, my initial reason for reaching out to this dude was to try to gain insight in how a person copes knowing that there is never going to be an after prison show. I am in no way trying to pity party this at all. This man did what he did. He deserves to be where he is. Sometimes I just feel so lost, bro. It is crazy. Anyways, I will shut up for now. If you could help me out, I could really use it, man. Either way, I would like to hear from you and see how life is treating you. I really did enjoy hearing from you. Take it easy and no problem. If you can't send me nothing, much respect, Doug. Now we're going into December. This email came on December the 8th of 2019. And at this point, it has been September, October, November, December, so we're almost at three months, probably two and a half months since Doug had last heard from me. And he says, hey man, what's been up with you? Uh, nothing in here, just hanging out. I wanted to ask you if you could help me out with some money, please. I would like to do something for my daughter and myself for Christmas and my birthday. If you could, I would really appreciate it. I don't hear from you anymore. I hope that things are still good out there. What's been going on in your life? I hope you and your old lady are doing good. Thank you for all the help you have given me with friends. I have a few people I enjoy writing. Thank you. Now keep this in mind. It was just a couple of emails ago. He was asking me to take his name off of things. And I didn't want to say this then because I didn't honestly know for sure. But, you know, we're getting some confirmation on that now. You know, it seems like this guy's head is all over the place. As it probably should be given the situation that he's in. Probably no telling the type of stuff that he deals with again mentally. And if you can't help me out with money for the holidays, I completely understand. I hope to hear from you either way. Much respect, Doug. In every email I believe thus far, I, I'm pretty sure it's been in every email he's asked me for money. I want to say this also. You know, when you got to a pen pal, you don't know that person. They reach out for whatever reason. They come across you for whatever reason, especially when you got a high profile case. You're going to get more pen pals throughout the time that you serve sporadically uh, they're just going to come around because they run across your story just like I did in relation to Doug's. Even though I can't relate to this, I can relate to the fact of knowing, like, like I know this happens, where you'll get pen pals, you'll have your little correspondence relationship with that person writing back and forth, and, you know, if they can help you out financially, you're going to ask. You are going to ask when you're locked up, hey, yo, can you send me some money? I mean, it's just a part of it, and you got to understand it because, you know, when you're locked up, you either usually don't have much money, if any money at all, or you got a job and you're not making any money, if much money at all. So even though, you know, this dude has asked me for money in every one of these emails, I get it, I understand it, but also, the point that I was really trying to make here is, even if you feel like, you know, because you got to imagine, these emails, for the most part, seem pretty nice, Right? It seemed pretty nice. He's not tripping on the fact that I ain't really been writing to him. At least that's what it seems like on the surface. 
I wonder what it's really like, though. Like, you know, F me, which he probably has every right. He's, he's got every right. I've forgotten about him. F me, but at least let me write him, be nice, and see if he'll send me a couple of bucks. And I get it. I'm not mad at this dude. He's got every right to be mad at me because, you know, I came into his life and it seems like I've disappeared. I'm going to try to resurface now because I remembered, I've been reminded because a lot of people have asked me, Joe, what's up with your prison pen pals? And I was like, yep, I need to get to that. I need to get to that. And then guess what? We're four months later down the road and we're just now getting back to that. All right. That last email was on December the 8th of 2019. This final email, folks, comes to us on January the 17th, 2020. Uh, this is a longer email, and let's just go ahead and get into this. This is where some feelings are going to fly. And before we even read them, I'm going to let you know, I feel like the man's he's justified in this. He's got every right to feel the way that he does. So let's roll it. Damn, stick, it's pretty effed up that you don't holler at me when you just dip out. It kind of felt like you could make a few dollars off of me, and now that you don't, you just roll out of my life without a word. We're doing a video about a dude serving 1,800 years. The chances of these videos being monetized are like 50-50. I mean, we really skate the line, skirt the line, in terms of what gets monetized and what doesn't. And sometimes reading these crazy emails about dudes getting their head busted open, that doesn't always make the cut, monetization-wise. Have I made money off of these videos? I'm sure that I have. Have I paid my way sending money every time that I make a video? I'm pretty damn sure that I have. And in fact, I'm sure I've got the JPay receipts to prove it. But that's, I'm not, forget all of that. And again, I feel like this guy, he's absolutely entitled to be mad at me. I'm the one that forgot about him. I only asked for one thing when you and I first spoke, and that was, I asked you that no matter what, if you was not feeling like writing me anymore, you just let me know and don't just dip out on me. And I remember that vividly. He absolutely asked for that much in respect. And maybe that's where we're at in this at this point. Maybe I should just send him money one final time, a nice little trip to the commissary, and just say, hey, look, Doug, I do apologize. You know, it's been nice to kick it with you, I guess you could say. And I just don't have time anymore. I'm sorry. And if I do get the time, you know, I will shoot you a line. But maybe that's what I need to do. But yet you have done just the opposite than what you promised me. I will say this, though. I am grateful for what you did for me. At the same time, it feels like you used me for a quick dollar. Now you just don't got a use for an mf -er no more. Difference in life for you and I is you got to hit the streets again, and I don't. When I give people a chance to be in my life, I take that personally. That is why I don't let people get to know me and why I don't talk to many people. It ain't shit to you because hell, there is plenty of people like me in the world. But what you don't take in consideration is that people like me search and beg for people to be a friend to us, to help us, and give some type of reason to go through another day for. When people just roll out without saying shit, I feel disrespected and like you just say F me. But this whole time you tell people out there that you help people out. Yet you are causing damage in people in prison whether or not you are trying to do or not understanding at all. Life is different for short-term inmates than lifers, bro. You need to really think about the shit you're doing to people in prison. Even just a short note here and there is okay. But nothing, especially during the holidays, is effed up. I don't expect people to understand life from me, but you know what prison life is about and how effed up it is. So I expected more from you. I know you got a life out there every day in a family too. I respect that. Honestly, I do. I don't think your priorities are in order to be trying to do the stuff that you talk about because you're causing people damage and harm in here. I don't know how many people you write and stuff, but my life is not a game or just for people's effing amusement. Life is shitty enough without people playing games with it. Anyways, thank you for your time. Shit is effed up, dude. I did not see this coming from you, Doug. You know, like I had said, 
getting into these emails and how I hadn't read the first four of these emails, I really hadn't even read much of this last email. I knew that it was bad, though. I knew it was bad just from the tone of it in the beginning. But maybe he's right, some of these things that he said. You know, that I'm causing damage to people in prison. I don't write anybody in prison. I very rarely write anybody in prison. I'm not even going to sit here and justify none of this. I don't feel like that's what I should be doing right now. I need to own this. And I'm going to own this. And I'm going to also end this as well. You know, Doug's pretty mad at me right here. We could go a number of different ways with this. God, we could go a number of different ways with this. I feel like, you know, he had every right to say what he said. And he spoke his mind. He spoke how he was feeling. I forgot about this guy. So, again, I, I get that he is mad. Damn sure wouldn't want to be locked up with Doug right now. I can tell you that. Would $50 to $100 fix this problem? Maybe. And I know that sounds horrible. But it's the damn truth. It is. It's the way I feel about it. I don't, I, I never meant to play no games with Doug. I never meant to, you know, fill him with any kind of false hope or, or promises. And I really try not to do that. I can remember from the beginning me reaching out to Doug, telling him, you know, I wanted to get the opportunity to be able to share his story. But I never meant to cause any damage or harm. He says that my priorities are messed up and that I talk about helping people in prison. I don't think I'm trying to help people in prison. I know I'm not trying. I can't help people in prison. You know how I help people in prison? By trying to get things out there. I've got the ability to be able to reach people. Sometimes it's a lot of people, and sometimes, you know, it's not as many people. But coming into Doug's life, you know what, I am going to justify this. You know, I came into this guy's life, here was another pen pal, just a different type of pen pal. I'm a pen pal who does prison YouTube. And you know, I paid my way, sent money to Doug, introduced the world to him for people to be able to write to this man. And he said it in the last email how, you know, he really appreciated the friends that he had gained because of me introducing him to the world. So I don't agree with, you know, the fact that he says that, you know, I'm causing damage. If he feels that way, I respect that, but I, I can't agree with that. And I think in conclusion to all of this, we've gained a lot of insight into what it's like to serve a life sentence. Especially from Doug, you know? It's miserable, it's violent, lockdowns, constant need for money, constant feeling of being alone, constant feeling of, you know, never knowing when somebody's gonna come into your life or when that person's gonna leave. Trust issues, more issues than you could ever even imagine, and overall, just a miserable existence. And I'm saddened by that, that... You know, we've gotten to know a guy who's going through that. But I expect that that's how it would be when you do something and end up in a situation like he's in. I'm not mad at Doug. I'm not trying to make myself sound like I'm right and he's wrong. You know what? I'll be the first to tell you this guy's right. He's got every right to feel the way that he does because it's been four months since I've written to him. Written to him. So, that's the update. And... Now, I give you the conclusion. The conclusion is, is I'm getting ready to send Doug an email saying, hey, look, I do apologize for losing contact with you. I have been busy, and I am going to grant you the one thing that you asked me to do at the very beginning, and that was, you know, if I'm not going to write you anymore, to tell you that I'm not going to write you anymore. So I'm telling you that I'm not going to write you anymore. I'm sorry, and here is a little bit of money for you. It might not be the right way to do it, but it's the way I'm doing it. And it's the best conclusion that I can come up with. Now, I want to say this as well. If you're watching this and, you know, you write the dub, you want to write the dub, write to this guy. Because this guy needs people to be able to talk to. And don't, you know, don't not write to this guy. And don't be mad at him for the way that he's talking to me. Because I get it. And just think about if you were in the situation. God forbid you ever are. You know, let the introduction and the chapter of Doug, you know, let that showcase why you never want to go serve you a life sentence. So don't ever wind up in a situation that could cause that. Folks, I wanted to bring you guys this update. I'm sorry that it took me so long to be able to do so. And in some way, I hope that you enjoyed it. If not, 
you know, simply by just being interested in hearing what this man had to say. I'm not going to sugarcoat this at all. It is what it is. And I want to hear what you guys have to say about this. So please leave a like and a comment on this video, letting me know just what you think. As always, until next time, enjoy life, the free world. Never take a moment for granted and make the most of every day.